So today is the third episode of Wish I Knowed Sooner, a hodgepodge list of things I painfully figured out or I felt like I should have just known sooner. So for starters, we have the editor menu with the editor settings. Obviously the settings are here, but more importantly, there is a list of every shortcut in Godot and you can also reset them to whatever you want. One that I particularly like to reset is the fold. Usually it's set to nothing and I like to fold all of my lines of code I don't like opening up a large script and seeing endless lines of code. I like to fold them all up and also have the option to unfold them. If you are going to do this, you have to make sure that you are clicked into the right window of Godot. So if you are in the scripting area and you click your hotkey, which for me was tilde, it will not work. You have to be in the proper window and click the hotkey. This makes more sense if you know how Godot plugins work. In a plugin, there's a function called handles, which decides whether you are clicking the proper node. So in this function, it checks to see if I'm clicking a tile map. It won't do anything unless I'm actually clicking in the area of a tile map in the 2D viewport. I did this so I could place multiple tiles at the same time. It's not perfect, but it helps me build my maps quicker. In combination of the plugin that I'm using, I overrode the set cell function. This only affects the set cell function in this tile map. It doesn't affect any of the other tile maps that I have in the scene. And when you override any function, you have to make sure you have the correct arguments, but also the correct defaults for each argument, otherwise it will give you an error. If you do override the set cell function in a tile map, keep in mind that every time you click, it calls the set cell function for each of the eight adjacent tiles around the tile that you just placed. You can also add a tile map's collisions to its parent. That way you can have multiple tile maps that all use a single signal from the parent. And speaking of sharing with the parent, you can also share shaders between nodes by using the parent and setting the shader to that parent node. When you're in the tile set editor, make sure you're zoomed out far enough that you do not have to scroll to cover the entire region of your tile set, because if you do scroll, it will not give you the correct shape. Also, when you have an, an inherited scene like this one and you go to the original scene and you reparent the tile map, click save and the tile map will be deleted and you will not be able to get it back. One way to safely move your tile maps would be to uh, save the branch as a scene. And then after you add an instance of that child in the proper place, you could go ahead and merge it back into the scene if you want. Also, if you are moving your nodes around and it will break your code, you can always export a node path. And after you assign the node, if you use this variable, you can freely move that node around. Also in the script editor, I didn't know you could make arrays by writing a range. This is what you get. And you can also add more on the end. If you use rand range, it will already be randomized. And what I'm doing here is I'm testing code with an editor script. It has to be a tool, but you can add this run function. And if you look here, you can run that code to see if your math is working. And the shortcut will be here. So if you have any of your own Wish I Node tips or any questions, please just let me know in the comments.